If you're looking for a wealth of ground beef knowledge and recipes to last you a while, this is your video. Welcome to Meals with Maria. Maybe you have a freezer full of ground beef that needs to be used, or perhaps you found a really good sale, or you're just looking for some new inspiration. These ground beef fish recipes are delicious, and I know you will love them. They are perfect to use up your stash or use for some sale ground beef. We're gonna get started with some slow cooker ground beef enchiladas. And I'm gonna cut up one onion and one red pepper. Both these additions are delicious, but if you don't have them on hand, you can always use about a tablespoon of onion powder and completely omit the red pepper if you don't have it. I'm using one pound of ground beef and you'll notice that I am not browning this before I put it in my crock pot. Most recipes I see, you have to brown the ground beef before you cook it. And in this case, you can put it right in there, which makes me very, very happy. Then I have one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce and two cubes of chicken bouillon. I've grabbed about a tablespoon of tomato paste right out of my freezer, pop that in, and then I have two drained and rinsed cans of kidney beans. For spices, add three teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of dried oregano, and a half a teaspoon of chili powder. Give it a good mix, and then you can cook this for eight hours on low or four hours on high. This mixture on its own was good enough to eat as it was, or maybe even just like with some chips and sour cream. But to make it even better, we're going to add some sliced up tortillas. So I have about 10 smaller soft shell tortillas, flour tortillas, and I slice those into strips. You wanna place those right into your crock pot and mix them around really well into your mixture. And then you can top that with one to two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. I also think that cheddar cheese would be great here too. So whatever your choice is, I did do it with the mozzarella and it was wonderful. And then you put the cover on and you wanna cook this for another 30 minutes on high until your cheese is melted. Alternatively, you can actually pop it into a hot oven for about 10 minutes. My mouth is watering just watching this. I can't wait to make it again. It turned out so cheesy and ooey gooey and delicious. I just topped kind of on the side here for garnish some chopped up red peppers and scallions. And then I topped the whole thing with some chopped cilantro. If you had dried cilantro, you could use that as well. None of these things are absolutely necessary because this is still gonna taste awesome with or without it. I just served ours with some corn on the side and a little bit of sour cream, but holy moly, this was so good. Everybody was raving about it. It was an absolute winner. Ben was also a fan as usual. He's such a good eater and he, he really devoured this. Next up is lasagna soup. This is lasagna soup. Start off by browning one pound of ground beef. I'm using this awesome masher tool that is a fan favorite, so I will link that below before you. Then I'm draining off the grease. I'm using this really cool draining tool, which I will also link if you don't have one of those. In the next step, return the beef to the pan and cook it over medium heat with one diced onion and four grated cloves of garlic. I used a microplane to do this and it works awesome. You'll wanna let it cook for about five to eight minutes until the onion is cooked through. Now the recipe calls for crushed tomatoes, but I only had whole canned, so I used 28 ounces of the San Marzano's as well as 14 ounces of my own canned tomatoes. And since I needed to mash the tomatoes up, I figure why not use my fun little masher thing again? And it worked just fine. Now I'm really not much for following recipes 100%, I just go with what I have. The recipe called for beef stock, which I did not have. So I'm adding six teaspoons of chicken bouillon, and then I'll be adding six cups of water to this dish. Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. It tasted delicious and was not a problem at all. Then I'm adding one teaspoon of dried basil and one teaspoon of dried oregano and parsley. Once everything is mixed together, I cooked it on low for seven hours. After seven hours, I opened up the crock pot and broke in about 10 pieces of uncooked lasagna. At that point, I let it cook for 30 more minutes. You can see the uncooked lasagna right here. 
I just broke the full pieces into pieces and then once it cooked for 30 minutes, it was perfectly cooked through and it was delicious pasta. You can see how it changes here. This soup tasted just like lasagna. I served it with some whole milk ricotta, kind of dolloped on top and it was incredible. Definitely would recommend with some garlic bread and it's such a nice fall meal for your family. The next meal is the stuffed cabbage soup. I am just using this shredded cabbage that's really for coleslaw instead of a whole head of cabbage because honestly it was just cheaper and I didn't need a whole head, but you can use regular cabbage if you'd like. And then I'm using one pound of ground beef. Then the recipe calls for one pound of bacon and I happen to have a half a pound of regular bacon and a half a pound of turkey bacon in my fridge. And you guys know how I am, I'm not wasting anything, so this will do. Also called for one onion, and I had one where I had used very, barely any Worcestershire sauce and some chicken broth, and I'm just using my chicken bouillon because it's way less expensive. Then three quarters a cup of rice, as well as some diced tomatoes not shown here because I completely forgot that we needed those, but I do put them in later, don't you worry. This recipe does require a little bit of prep work before putting everything in the crock pot. All of the bacon needs to be cooked, so I'm cooking my regular bacon on the stove and my turkey bacon in the microwave. On the stove, it's just gonna cook over medium heat for about 10 minutes, and the turkey bacon is gonna cook in between two paper towels for four minutes. I just wanna get it all done as fast as possible and be as efficient as possible. Then I'm just gonna slice up my onion, and I will eventually cook my onion with my beef before I put it into the crock pot. So the recipe calls for five to six cups of beef broth and I'm substituting our chicken bouillon with water. I realized after that I had only made four cups and I needed five or six so I do add a little bit later. Not shown, I add in one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of thyme, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, we're not sure, no one's sure. Worcestershire isn't even sure. Just mix it all up and cook it for seven to eight hours on low or four to six on high. This is how it turns out. It's so amazing. That bacon makes this so incredible. It gives it this smoky flavor. I can't believe that I got my husband to eat it. I wouldn't tell him what it was called at first when he first took his first bites, but it turned out great and he is into the cabbage now. Next up, we're making slow cooker barbecue meatballs. Honestly, you can just take frozen meatballs, make the sauce that I make, throw those into the slow cooker, and that's gonna make an amazing meal for you too. I just happened to have fresh ground beef on hand, so I had to make my own meatballs. This recipe is a little bit different, so it calls for one egg, one tablespoon of mustard, I use Dijon, a third a cup of breadcrumb, and the recipe calls for one minced shallot, which I did not have. I didn't even have regular onion at this point, so we went with red onion, which I've never used in a meatball before, but honestly, it turned out great. And then I'm just adding one teaspoon of parsley and one teaspoon of garlic powder to the meatballs and I will roll them up and cook them over medium heat on a skillet until they're cooked through. Then add them to the slow cooker and add our barbecue sauce, which is just one cup of your favorite barbecue sauce, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of smoked paprika and a half a teaspoon of salt. It tastes pretty barbecue-y. I mean, most of it is just the barbecue sauce, but the Worcestershire and the smoked paprika definitely give it that smoky flavor that makes it taste amazing. I cooked these for one hour on high and they came out incredible. They were so flavorful and so delicious. It's a great thing to add to any table, especially around the holidays.
Now this next recipe is on my list of family favorites. I keep a list of all of the recipes that we've tried. And when we sit down to dinner, we say, oh, this is so delicious. And it was something easy and repeatable. I put it on my list of family favorites, not necessarily my budget family favorites that I posted, but this is a different family favorite list that includes everything. And this is a budget meal. So maybe it should have been on there, but this is one of my husband and myself, one of our favorites. This recipe is called quick ramen noodle stir fry and it calls for one cup of diced sweet onion. So I'm just putting an entire onion in, which I know is probably a little bit more than one cup, but the onion in this is so delicious, so I'm not afraid to use it. Now, you ever feel like you're easily influenced in the kitchen? I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it said that if you're not chopping your own garlic, that you're, I don't know, failing in some sort of way. So I was like, you know what? I need to chop my own garlic today. I'm not using that garlic press. I don't need a what do they call it? Like a single source or a single use kitchen item. <laughs> You're just like, just use your chef knife. Come on. It doesn't take that long. So um, yeah, I was influenced and I was like, okay, I'm going to cut my own minced garlic up today. So today I'm slicing up three cloves of garlic or there was, I think there's small, four small ones and a couple of green onions and you're gonna thinly slice those as well. In the meantime, I am boiling a large pot of water and I'm gonna cook two packages of ramen noodles until tender, about three to four minutes, and then I'm gonna rinse them with cold water and drain well. I'm just gonna set those aside. We're gonna mix our sauce together by adding a third a cup of beef stock to one quarter cup of oyster sauce with one tablespoon of rice wine and vinegar and one teaspoon of sriracha, more or less to taste your choice. I was serving this to the whole family, so I went a little bit light today. And then you just wanna mix that up really well and we'll set that aside because we're gonna use it a little bit later. You wanna heat a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil over medium heat in either a large skillet or a wok like I am. I'm adding my onion, all my chopped onion and one pound of ground beef. And I am sure that you could use ground turkey in this and it would taste absolutely delicious. You wanna cook that until your beef is brown about three to five minutes and making sure that all of that beef is crumbled up. Then you wanna remove all of the excess fat from this because at the end of cooking it, it's gonna be kind of fatty depending on your percentages. So make sure to pour all of that out. At this point, you wanna add in three cloves of minced garlic, the minced garlic that I already uh, broke up. And then if you have it, you can add a tablespoon of freshly grated ginger. But fresh ginger for some reason is something I rarely have on hand. So I just use some ground ginger all the times that I've made it and it always has turned out great. So that's a substitute that you can make. And this, I think you could also substitute onion powder or garlic powder if you don't have the fresh onion or garlic, even though both of those are very inexpensive ingredients. After a minute of cooking that all together, you wanna to add in your sauce, your beef stock mixture, and make sure to scrape up any brown bits from the bottom of your skillet. You wanna stir in your ramen noodles until everything is evenly heated through and everything is coated in sauce. Then your dinner is ready. So just make sure everything is mixed and you are ready to go. You then wanna to top this with those chopped scallions and that's it, that is your meal. This is so good, my kids love it. My husband loves it. It's a huge winner in our house every single time. So if you're ever like, okay, I have ground beef, but oh, I am just sick of meatballs or meat sauce and spaghetti, and I don't wanna make burgers, I don't have burger buns, but I, gee, I have these things of ramen noodles sitting around. <laughs> you can absolutely make this recipe. It is super simple and super delicious, so. I 100% recommend it. Our next budget meal is a shepherd's pie. And I will tell you that this is like the best shepherd's pie recipe that I have ever tried. So I took one and a half onions. I'm trying to get to about a cup of chopped yellow onion, but you really can't go, you know, too crazy with this. Like have as much as you want, it's delicious. Then you wanna peel one and a half to two pounds of russet potatoes. I have two rather large ones right here that I am just peeling up and then I am going to dice them. And those are gonna be for the mashed potatoes on top of the shepherd's pie. 
Now, you do not have to use potatoes if you don't have them. Potatoes are a great budget uh, item. They are relatively inexpensive. I can usually find five or 10 pounds for two to $5, and they go so well with almost every meal. But if you don't have them or you don't have the time or whatnot, it is super easy to just buy the potato flakes. Those are also extremely inexpensive and they still taste great on a shepherd's pie. So I'm just gonna cook my onions up over a medium high heat with some oil. You can choose the oil of your choice. It's not gonna make a huge difference as far as the meal goes. You just wanna cook the onions for about five minutes, stirring occasionally. Then you wanna add in your pound of ground beef, or you could use ground lamb, or you could use ground turkey. Now, turkey can be a cheaper alternative, especially like I was talking about those tubes of turkey, and I find that especially in shepherd's pie, it is extremely cost-effective and delicious tasting, like not a problem at all as far as a swap goes. I have also used lentils in a shepherd's pie, and I will post the video down below where I do use a lentil as an alternative in a shepherd's pie. It's an extreme grocery budget challenge, and it can save you big bucks. Not my absolute favorite way to make it, but it is good, especially if you like lentils, it is a great alternative. I was able to buy some ground beef on sale for I believe a $2.49 a pound and put it in the freezer. So that is the ground beef that I am using in this video. And then to your ground beef, you wanna add in a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of dried thyme leaves, two teaspoons of dried parsley flakes, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, and a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. Let the meat and the spices cook for about six to eight minutes until the meat is fully browned and make sure to stir that occasionally. You can see that I'm mashing mine up with this fun little meat masher. I will put a link to this down below, but I've also heard that they have them at the Dollar Tree. So I haven't seen them myself, but that is quite a good deal if they do have one. To my cooked meat, I am adding a little bit of this Mushroom Company Umami from Trader Joe's just because I thought it would taste really good in this and it did. So just an option if you have like an extra spice that you like to add, go ahead and add that. And then once it's cooked, we're adding one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna stir to combine and cook for about a minute. To the mixture, you wanna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, as I mentioned before with garlic, go ahead and use garlic powder if that's all that you have. You don't have to add fresh garlic, it'll still taste delicious. Now, tomato paste is very inexpensive and a great thing to have on hand as far as budget meals go. It can add a lot of depth of flavor to meals that you make without adding a lot of extra cost. If you open a can of tomato paste and you're like, I'm not gonna use the rest of this, you should throw that into a small plastic bag and put it in the freezer. It freezes really well and you can just take the frozen tomato paste and put it right into whatever you're cooking and it will cook up in like two seconds. So I usually try and make like two tablespoon containers of tomato paste out of those cans so that I don't waste anything. If you really don't have any tomato paste, you can always use three tablespoons of tomato sauce in place of one tablespoon of tomato paste. You may wanna just cook that down on the stove first and that will still give your food a lot of depth of flavor and it should be a pretty good swap out. I did it the other day and it was no problem at all. Just wanna stir this until it's well incorporated and there are no clumps of the tomato paste left. At this point, you wanna add in all of your frozen veg. So I have like a whole container here of peas and carrots and green beans. I think the recipe actually just calls for one cup of mixed frozen peas and carrots. And I said, forget it, we're putting it all in. I don't mind putting like a full mixed vegetable in. If you're like a traditionalist, I get it. Like go ahead and just use the peas and carrots, but this is what I had on hand. So I put the whole thing in. You also wanna put in one cup of beef broth. Now I usually keep beef bouillon on hand because that is so inexpensive. Here is what the filling for the shepherd's pie looks like when it's all finished and oh, the flavor on this is incredible. In the meantime, you do wanna cook up your potatoes. So I know we made those a long time ago, but I just boiled the potatoes in a large pot. I covered them with water and I brought them to a boil, reduced it to a simmer, and then cooked the potatoes until they were fork tender, about 10 or 15 minutes. Drained them and added eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, about a third a cup of half and half, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cracked ground pepper. 
and you may wanna add some Parmesan cheese to this as well. I'm just using a hand masher to mash these up. I know some people use like a hand mixer and that helps a lot. Again, you don't have to do this. The problem with making homemade mashed potatoes and the cost of things is that butter and milk are expensive and you could definitely swap out the butter for margarine or something less expensive, maybe put half the butter in, but I mean, the butter is like what makes it taste delicious. So that's kind of what's tough about making like your own homemade mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes are cheap, but adding milk and butter to them really does add when you could just use like a potato flake and add water. And that's a lot more cost efficient. So just your choice, however you want to do it. I'll tell you the buttery mashed potatoes are absolutely amazing, but it's still good with a butter with a flake mashed potato as well. And so we are just going to add in the filling to a 13 by nine. Hello guys, I'm making chipper pie. So as you can see, Julian has joined me for this portion of the video and he wanted to get helping with the shepherd's pie. So he's gonna help me put the mashed potatoes over the top and just kind of dollop the potatoes all over the pie and try and spread it evenly. Once your potatoes are on the pie, you wanna cook this at 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. And you may wanna put a dish below it to make sure it doesn't bubble over because when this does come out, it's like super bubbly and amazing. Next up, we have what we like to call grandpa's special combo. Or when I was growing up, it was called daddy's special combo. So this is my dad's favorite thing to make for my sister and I. When my mom was working, she used to work nights and we would probably have this once a week. It was our absolute like go-to thing and we look forward to it so much. It's just one of those things that is so nice to now make for my boys and know that they enjoy it as well. So you just wanna cut up we're gonna need three quarters of a cup of diced onion. And I think I'm probably just gonna use this whole onion because you know how I do. Just, I have the onion, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> you can never really have too much onion. And then you need a half a cup of chopped celery and about two stalks will do. In a pot, the recipe actually specifically calls for a three quart saucepan, which I think this is larger than that, but that's okay. I'm gonna brown up our ground beef. So just a pound of ground beef. I had that in my freezer always buy it on sale and then add in the onion and the celery and just gonna cook this up until this ground beef is browned and I'm just using this awesome little meat breaker upper thing that I always put in my description box down below if you ever want to get yourself one and you haven't yet you can check that out Once the beef is ground you want to add in two cans of stewed tomatoes or it's like a pound and 12 ounces it's supposed to be a large can of stewed tomatoes one teaspoon of salt, stir this together and bring this mixture to a boil. Once boiling, add in one cup of uncooked macaroni. Thing I also love about this recipe is it's a one pot recipe. This is like a one pot recipe before one pot recipes were cool. Cover and cook over low heat for about 10 minutes until the macaroni is cooked through. I think I like this recipe for all the same reasons my dad liked this recipe. It is low ingredient. It doesn't take much time. There's not too much going on, but the taste is amazing. It is a kid pleaser. And so once your macaroni and everything is cooked, you want to add two cups of shredded cheddar cheese and then go ahead and mix that up until that cheese is completely melted. I just serve this in bowls and the kids and family absolutely love it. And you can put a little sour cream with it. That's kind of my favorite way to eat it. And it's just such a favorite going back to when I was little. Next up, we have one of our family favorites, which is four ingredient meatloaf. Yes, it is that simple and it is that good. So you can see I have my meat coming out of the freezer. I had to defrost it in the refrigerator. And then you're gonna want a half a cup of water and a half a cup of ketchup. And if you don't have ketchup, you can use barbecue sauce. Now, usually I just use an entire box of stuffing mix from Aldi and that is like 
69 or 89 cents, something like that. In this case, I didn't have that stuffing mix. It's the same as stovetop. So if you have stovetop stuffing, just use a box and you're good to go. I had this Pepperidge Farm leftover. Um, I, I used part of it in my $0 dinners the other day. So if you wanna check that video out, I'll put that in the description box below. But I needed to use the rest of it. So I'm like, I'm gonna use it in my meatloaf today. And it turned out great. So you wanna use two eggs with that. And that is it. This is my super simple, I think it's like less than five ingredient meatloaf. I just added a little bit more because I'm like, oh, we need a little bit more bread because it didn't, it wasn't exactly the right amount, I had to guess. But use one box of stovetop or the Aldi brand and you're gonna be absolutely fine. And you mix those two eggs and the ketchup and the water and that's it. And this makes a super moist meatloaf. It is so delicious and it's so easy. Like it takes no time at all. You can see how fast I put this together. And I just love that I don't have to get out a million ingredients. And I do love also that I don't have to chop onions. I chop onions like all the time and they are a great budget addition to many, many meals. But I love that there's no onions in this because it makes it very easy. <laughs> and so then I'm just putting everything down there. And then on um, this one, I actually end up putting a little bit of ketchup and a little bit of barbecue sauce over the top. Again, your choice, what you want to do. You can do one or the other, or you can do both. And it still turns out absolutely amazing. You wanna bake this at 350 degrees for about 45 to 60 minutes. Kinda of depends on your oven. I think I usually do like 50 minutes. And then with that, I'm gonna have some frozen peas. So I'm just cooking those according to the package. Yet again, these are so easy and so cheap. We're not making any fancy sides, but these are things my family loves. Like the kids love steamed green peas. And I think that with meatloaf, you get a little mashed potato going and some peas. It doesn't get any easier than that. It also doesn't get any more delicious than that. Like that's what I want with my meatloaf. I'm not gonna go with like a fancy, crazy side. I just want simple. So here I'm actually gonna make up some boxed mashed potatoes that I have in my cupboard. I mean, these are so cheap and I actually got these by accident, but I've been using them because you know what? You gotta, you gotta use up what you have. And I'm just following the instructions. We've got some butter, some water, some salt, and some milk. And it is as easy as microwaving this. So you just microwave everything that you poured in there, all these ingredients, and then you just mix in your potato flakes, I guess. I'd always call them potato flakes. <laughs> and it makes up an amazing mashed potato that goes perfectly with your meatloaf. Now the next meal that I'm gonna make are these amazing meatloafs with sweet potato frosting, basically. <laughs> They're topped with sweet potatoes. They are barbecue meatloafs. They are basically a big hit in my family. So you wanna peel your potatoes and chop them up into cubes, and then you wanna cut up an onion. You can see that I'm doing this super fast because you know who wants to watch me chop an entire onion again for the four millionth time. Now here is the fun part. We're gonna put about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of olive oil or whatever oil that you have in a pan and cook up that onion. It's diced pretty small. You gotta think about this, it's going into a meatloaf so you don't wanna eat like huge pieces of onion and you wanna cook that until it turns translucent, usually about five minutes over medium heat. Just add that to about a pound of ground beef. So you saw there that I added about two cloves of garlic minced and then um, we added in a little bit of salt and one teaspoon of di dried thyme, about a quarter teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper. And now I'm adding in a half a cup of barbecue sauce. That ends up being, I'm saying 50 cents. It's probably not even 50 cents because I know that you can get a package of barbecue sauce for a dollar. So I'm saying like a half a pack, but I think even a half a cup is probably less than that. So mix all of that together and that is gonna be your meatloaf mix. Now these are meatloaf cupcakes. So here is my cupcake pan and then I am just taking my one and a quarter tablespoon thing and putting the meatloaf in there. I'm gonna divide this between 12 cups. So I just wanna make sure it's even. It's a good place to start just by using your cookie scoop and then filling in the rest of it with whatever's left over. You wanna cook these in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Now while these are cooking, you wanna steam your sweet potatoes for about 10 to 12 minutes. 
And then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of butter and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And that is it for your sweet potato mash. So I happen to be using my immersion blender to mix everything together, but you could totally put these inside of a mixer, use a hand mixer or use a potato masher. You're basically just making mashed sweet potatoes. Now you can put these inside of a cooler contraption, but personally I'm just using like a fun little fancy tip here, like as if I am frosting a cupcake. And then I put that into a Ziploc bag and cut the tip off and that's how I'm piping everything in. So you wanna pipe your mashed potatoes once they cool off right on top of your meatloaf. So you can see here are your meatloaf cupcakes. It's interesting they do come out like a little bit smaller and I almost thought, gee, you could use these. I've never thought to use a muffin pan to make meatballs before, but you could totally make meatballs in a muffin pan. <laughs> and then they would all be the same size, I guess. I don't know, seems simple to me. So this turned out fabulous. Like I love the barbecue flavor on it. And then I just piped over the sweet mashed potatoes. Um, and you know, this is a learning process on how you can make the tops look perfect. I kind of watched a video when you start in the middle and then go around, but it doesn't matter. It all tastes the same. I thought they were absolutely delicious and it was just fun for the family to have something a little bit different, you know? And I think that the sweet potato and the barbecue sauce is what really got me on these because they just, it just goes together so well. And then I just served it with a little bit of a salad on the side. And your total cost on this one ends up being like $7.78 uh, with your barbecue sauce at $0.50, cents, your ground beef at $4.50. That's expensive. And then your onion at uh, $0.90. Cents and sweet potatoes. At All right, this next meal is a little bit hardier. It is a cheeseburger skillet casserole, and you want to start with a pound of ground beef or ground turkey and we're gonna start cooking our macaroni and cheese at the same time as well all these are awesome they just start with the basic macaroni and cheese recipe and then you add stuff to it so I'm cooking up a pound of ground beef with it's probably about a quarter cup of onions you could do a whole onion if you have one I happen to be out this specific day so I was cutting up the last of my onions I needed to get to the store you just want to brown that ground beef until everything's fully cooked and at the same time you can cook your pasta At this point, add in one 16 ounce container of frozen mixed vegetables, a third a cup of ketchup, one quarter cup of water, half a teaspoon of prepared mustard, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix well to combine and then let that simmer for about 10 minutes until your vegetables are fully cooked through. After 10 minutes, add in your fully mixed and ready macaroni and cheese and about three quarters of a cup of shredded cheddar. Mix everything well into well combined and you have your cheeseburger skillet. This was absolutely delicious. My husband later said, he was like, it reminded me of something. It kind of reminded me of Burger King. And I was like, that's because it had ketchup and mustard in it. It was an actual cheeseburger skillet. And he didn't realize that. So I, I think that the flavors came through when it comes to like, it's a cheeseburger in a pasta. Anyway, it was, it was quite good and it was a great thing to feed a family really quickly and make sure that they get a little bit of everything, but also you have that like kid factor of the macaroni and cheese, which makes everybody happy. This next one is another really budget friendly dish. It's a poor man's lasagna. Now this uses a penny pasta instead of a lasagna noodle. And I think that that's one of the reasons why it's considered a budget meal. A regular penne or rigatoni will go on sale for up to, down to like 33 cents a box, where lasagna noodles are usually not included in that, so they're usually more expensive. Then I'm gonna brown up a pound of ground beef or ground turkey. Again, if you have ground turkey on hand or you got it on sale or you can get it for $2.20 at Walmart, that's a lot cheaper than a ground beef. And this is the perfect recipe to switch that up with because it's in a casserole anyway, so you can't really taste the flavor difference. As a sub for ricotta in this, you're using 16 ounces of cottage cheese and eight ounces of softened cream cheese. And then you wanna mix that into your cooked penne. Now, unfortunately, I missed getting that on camera because sometimes that happens, it's just real life. You wanna layer a nine by 13 pan with half of this pasta mixture, half of your meat mixture, and half of a 24 ounce can of pasta sauce. 
you can get pasta sauce for as cheap as 84 cents at Walmart these days. So you can make this pretty inexpensive. I also found that with a regular lasagna, you're using two to three times that amount of pasta sauce. And in this, you don't need quite as much and it still turned out really, really good. Then you wanna repeat these same three steps with the remaining pasta, meat, and sauce. And then top this with one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella. I did take a look at some lasagna recipes to compare in the amount of ingredients and prices. And a lot of lasagna recipes are looking for up to two pounds of mozzarella, two pounds of ground beef or sausage, two to three jars of marinara sauce. So I felt like, I mean, yes, it's less, there's less going on here, but I felt like for, to fill the same area, we spent a lot less money and there were just a lot less ingredients. You do wanna bake this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. This is also a great make ahead or freeze ahead meal. It is super easy to just make and pop in your refrigerator and then pop it in the oven later. I feel like this had all the flavors and all the goodness of lasagna without the cost. I will be making this in the future for the sure. Next recipe like, this is for was a, a huge poor hit man's in my beef house. stroganoff. So like I said, I'm gonna use ingredients that I have on hand so they may not be the least expensive of the ingredients or options that are in the recipe but I had some mushrooms I had some bacon the recipe calls for turkey bacon which is definitely a lot less expensive then I had a pound of ground beef but you could also use ground turkey in this same idea as with the lasagna then you could use a beef bouillon cube versus beef broth sour cream onion and mushrooms. You could use canned mushrooms, you could use dried mushrooms, both of those would work fine in this as well. And as always, you could sub out your fresh onion and fresh garlic for onion powder and garlic powder. All of those things are still gonna make a delicious stroganoff. I'm just starting off by adding a couple tablespoons of olive oil to my pan. Now you can use whatever oil that you have. And if you're using a turkey bacon, you definitely wanna put that oil in there. Once I got thinking about it using a full fat bacon like this, I'm not sure that I needed the oil in the bottom of the pan, so that could have saved me a few cents uh, using an ingredient that I didn't need because I was gonna get plenty of fat rendered off of that bacon. So it kind of all depends on what you have. I also think that if you had like a sliced ham, that would work fine here as well. You're gonna want about six ounces of whatever meat that you do choose, and then you wanna cook that until it's crispy. Another choice would be pancetta. I mean, that's gonna be a little bit more expensive, I'm pretty sure, but hey, if you have it on hand, go ahead and use that. I also have a pot of water starting to boil on my stove because I am gonna cook some egg noodles in that pot. I'm just gonna cook them according to the instructions because I'm gonna serve the stroganoff over egg noodles. You could also do this over mashed potatoes. You could make your own, you could use instant. Either one of those things is gonna be fine. Rice is also a good choice. Then I have about eight ounces of fresh mushrooms. Like I said, you could use canned, you could use dried. Either of those things will be just fine. And I'm cooking those right inside of my oil or bacon fat. I did put the bacon off to the side in a bowl with a little paper towel to soak up the fat. Cook your mushrooms, stirring occasionally for about a minute. And then we're gonna add a little bit of salt, just a pinch. And now that my water's boiling, I'm just gonna add in my egg noodles. And like I said, just follow the instructions on the package. You wanna cook your mushrooms until they are soft and have given up most of their juices and then add them to the same plate that you have the bacon on. Add your beef or turkey to the same pan and we're going to also add in one diced onion as well as two cloves of minced garlic and salt and pepper. Here is also where you could probably sub out about a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Cook until your meat is mostly browned and then you can drain off any extra grease if you feel like there's a lot there. I actually didn't see a lot of grease on mine so I didn't, I opted not to because I knew that I was adding in some flour and some tomato paste. So you wanna add two tablespoons of tomato paste and a quarter cup of flour once your meat has browned and it mixed that really well together. Now, if you don't have tomato paste, no worries. I have come into that situation before and I'll just add like three tablespoons of marinara instead and the flavor is there, it turns out fine. It's a pretty good substitute. 
Everything is well mixed. You can add in one cup of beef broth or you can use a beef bouillon cube with one cup of water. That would be absolutely fine in this dish. And in a pinch, a cup of water with salt will always do too. You want to bring this to a boil and let it simmer for three to five minutes until your mixture thickens. Then you want to add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and one half a teaspoon of paprika. You want to cook this for a few minutes until your flavors blend and then you can add the mushrooms and the bacon back to the skillet. Remove this from the heat and stir in one cup of sour cream. You wanna serve this over the egg noodles, rice or mashed potatoes that you have. And oh my goodness, what a flavorful dish. This is absolutely phenomenal. I think it would taste great with turkey bacon and ground turkey to save some more money. This is a substitute, I guess, for original stroganoff recipe that I was looking up to figure out, okay, how does this, you know, why is this a, a poor man's recipe? Usually you use a sirloin steak. So it's totally fine without sirloin. It is delicious as it is like Thank this. you so and much for being here today. I hope you got some leftovers. great ground beef inspiration. If you're looking for some more meal inspiration, go ahead and check out this next video where I show you 10 amazing chicken dishes. Oh,